Good morning from me as well. My name is Roland Trebo, and I would like to look at the issue of travel technology from another vantage point. We've already looked at tour operators and destinations, and I would like to look at it from the vantage point of the hotel industry. As I already said, my name is Roland Trebo. I am network partner of Tourism um, Future and I mostly deal with online marketing, website architecture, but also with innovation and consulting on digital strategies, particularly geared towards hotels. Over the past years, we have seen a broad range of new technologies that have a great impact on our lives. The cycle of technical developments is developing faster and faster and has a great impact on hotel industries as well. I would like to show a couple of issues that I have chosen because I believe that they are important for 2017 because there is need for action and there are trends that I have identified that I believe hotels should take up. Now. It all begins in the hotel room itself, where we are seeing quite a number of innovations that can be implemented, that should be implemented. But it goes further than that, all the way to assistance and bots. Assistance and bots are a great and important topic here at ITB, and we will go a little bit more into detail with regard to these issues. But I would like to just show a couple of applications, possibilities of assistance and bots. And that brings me to the third bullet point on this slide, which I'd like to explain to you, namely the website. What is currently happening with websites and why we are really seeing a minor revolution with regard to websites. Now innovation in the hotel room, as I already said, in a hotel room, we are seeing more and more a situation where guests expect a certain technological standard in the hotel rooms, preferably the technical standard that they are used to from their homes. In the past, it used to be enough to have on-demand content on TV with flat screens and that was something that was sufficient to get the customer satisfied. but. Wi-Fi at some point became a very important issue, continues to be a very important issue. So Wi-Fi nowadays is something that you find in almost every hotel room, but particularly with regard to Wi-Fi, guests expect a stable and fast connection where they can use their devices free of charge and where they can do whatever they are doing at home. So it has to be fast, stable, and free of charge. In general, we can say the trend is guests using their own devices. So hotels do no longer have to make hardware available to the guest, but enable the guests to use the hardware they bring with them to control the room temperature, to control certain um, things, to consume content. So using their own hardware, have them dock onto the hotel system with that. Digital guests used to be um, a topic. This is becoming um, a standard as well. I've brought a couple of examples for interesting companies that deal with digital guest maps with check-in and check-out. Guests expect to check-in and check-out online using their own device. They want to also use their own device to open the hotel room to open the door. So these are very interesting things, and I can only recommend to you to have a closer look at these companies. Second big issue is assistance and bots. Assistance and bots were first presented in 2016. We talked a lot about the 
opportunities that go with assistance and bots, chat bots. And nonetheless, we've seen that not all of the opportunities that were initially presented were put into practice. Not all of the assistance and bots kept the promise they made, particularly the bots are oftentimes only another type of form that you needed to fill in. So they reacted to standard questions. And in the best case possible, they were connected to databases. But in 2017, we will be seeing a great level of change here. And why will we be seeing this? Now, I've brought just a couple of examples to show you some chatbots and um, assistants that are used in hotels. On the one hand, um, they're used in the Edwardian hotels, where you can get information on the environment, on the vicinity of the hotel, on the hotel itself. You can get all of this information via bots. You can ask questions. It all works quite nicely. Hilton went one step further. Hilton, together with IBM, developed Connie as an assistant, and Connie was given the physical shape of a robot. So as I said, in cooperation with IBM, IBM developed the artificial intelligence Watson, which is behind it, which is particularly responsible for voice recognition, speech recognition, and for the interpretation of the questions asked. And Connie is um, linked to a white database of IBM and can provide good information about the hotel, about the vicinity. So it constitutes a real added value. But the real innovation in the field of assistance is this. Amazon presented Echo last year for, I believe, a month. It's been available for the general public in Germany. So Amazon Echo can do a lot of things. Amazon Echo, you can ask questions and it will give answers. You can set the room temperature with it. You can do a lot of interesting things with it. What you expect such an assistant to do. But the really interesting aspect is that Amazon Echo has skills. And with these skills, it provides interfaces for other systems to connect. So this means using this interface, I can order Ubers. I can, in the United States, I can ask about um, waiting times at airports in the security um, lines. Using the kayak interface, I can have my entire trip planned. Based on my budget, I can have the system give me suggestions what to do. So there really is a broad range of opportunities. Amazon started with 30 skills in the beginning. In the United States, they currently have more than 6,000 skills for the system. And in Germany, we only started a month ago for the general public. So this really will provide a lot more opportunities. A lot more will develop here. Now, the skills that I've mentioned, you can very well imagine that this can be of great interest for hotels as well. And indeed, in the United States, um, there's the Wynn Hotel in Las Vegas, and all of its 4,760 rooms in the new hotel are equipped with Amazon Echo devices. So each room has a digital assistant um, who constantly um, listens. There are certain concerns with regard to that. Um, do I want to have something like this in my room as a guest? There are a lot of discussions going on on this. But nonetheless, this is an assistant that enables me to control the room temperature. Speech recognition works very well. The entire system um, works in various languages. And as I said, this is just the beginning of the development. So a lot is possible in this respect. And this is definitely an issue that we should keep our eyes on. And in 2017, we will be seeing a great development. Now, from the assistants, we are now moving on directly to the website, because these assistants 
have a great impact on the way the website should look like in 2017 and how it will look in the years to come. And I'm also referring to websites of hotels. Why? Now, these assistants show us that we can ask questions and that we can get answers to questions. We don't want to search. We don't want to get search results. What we want is answers. Siri on the iPhone introduced us to this a couple of years ago. When I ask Siri how Bayern Munich played yesterday and I get a list of websites where potentially the result of the game is listed, I am disappointed. But if I get the result directly, then that's what I want. But that means that the website needs to make these answers available. And this is where the big challenge lies for the websites of tomorrow. Second reason why websites will have to change considerably in 2017 is Google AMP and Facebook Instant Articles. What is that? Well, Google and Facebook in 2016 presented new technologies where sites on mobile devices are accelerated considerably. How do these technologies work? Now, these technologies pull content from the website and leave everything that slows down the website out. And using um, an intermediate memory, they immediately present the result. You've maybe noticed this on a smartphone if you um, have a look at news that sometimes this news is characterized with um, a little arrow symbol on the list and when you click on it you immediately get the result. Now why is this important? Because Google knows that the average loading time for a website on a mobile device is 8 seconds. But Google also knows that users usually are only willing to wait for 4 seconds for the website to load. Now using this technology they shorten the waiting time from 8 to 0 seconds. And basically this is a great thing. But it rev it reverts the situation that we're used to. It doesn't send the user from Google to the website, but it pulls the information from the website and shows it directly in Google. So visitors no longer have to access our websites. That's a technology that will have a great impact on the website. Now, how does this look like in Google? You can see this here. This is a standardized version of content provision. Google focuses on what's essential. In the best case, I have a logo and um, a title. I might have um, an image, and I have content. And it's quite understandable that this is very easy to display very quickly. And at the end of the day, that's what the users are interested in. This is a brief statistical overview of the relationship between um, loading times and bouncing. Um, you see that between three and five seconds, there already is a considerable difference. 30% of the users bounce when a uh, load time is between 1 to 3 percent, and with 5 seconds, the bounce rate increases um, by 90 percent. So you can see that it is quite understandable f why Google is pursuing this topic and why they have um, focused on it. Another issue plays a role here. These technologies started last year. Since the beginning of this year, we are seeing more and more apps that use these technologies. Google use this technology as an open source solution so every app can use this technology and as a consequence can make use of it. So if I open a LinkedIn link, for example, it can very easily be displayed using AMPs. So the apps no longer send the users to the website, but they pull the content from the website and show and display the content directly in the app. 
Now, this is something that only news sites have used so far. And this is changing now. AMP gets more and more features. More and more features are added to AMP. And we've already seen AMP in some hotel um, sites. Google tests this occasionally. But what we can definitely say is that it is an issue for hotel websites and 2017 will have to deal with this. What does it mean for the website now? Well, at the end of the day, it means that whoever wants to develop a new website or thinks of a relaunch has to keep these things in mind and has to think about what the role of a website particularly for a hotel, is in 2017. The website is developing more and more towards a database that provides information but is not necessarily shown on the content of the website but can be pulled off the website to Google, can be presented on different channels. And well, yes, it's a database. Now, how to deal with this development? Well, I think we will have to come up with a lot of things in order to counter this trend. Otherwise, we will we, we shouldn't be surprised about um, visitor numbers going down. So these are the three trends that I wanted to present to you. I'd like to present a very interesting study to you. It was published just a couple of weeks ago, and it focuses on the relationship between hotels and innovation, i.e. technological innovation. It's a study oh, yes. um, the, the study basically says that hotels will be dealing increasingly with digital natives, but as far as their own technology is concerned, they are still on the same level as they were 10, 15 years ago, technology-wise. So there's a second statement from this study, which says that the hotel industry is really conservative. These are results based on um, questionnaires. Guests were asked what their expectations with regard to the hotels are, and the hotels were asked where they really um, plan to implement innovations in their hotels. And the issues that the hotel industry mentioned was very similar to the issues that were of relevance 10 or 15 years ago. So we should never forget this. So. As a hotel, you are dealing with digital natives, and you are probably not doing a good job if you do not provide the standard to the digital natives that they're used to from their own homes. Now, this brings me to the end of my presentation. Thank you very much for the attention. Should you have questions, I'm gladly willing to answer them. Thank you.